let's start with Odell. Uh, how did he wind up on the Rams, Ian? Well, you know, he had at least five offers. Uh, I think more, but at least five that we know of. Um, no, actually, it would be six. It would include the Rams. So at least six offers. And, you know, I think they were all pretty similar. A couple were around the minimum. Packers were minimum. Chiefs were minimum. New Orleans was a little more. Seattle's was a little more. The Patriots was a little more. And the Rams was kind of in the ballpark. But they were, like, kind of a stealth team. And, you know, because they didn't really – like, there was a report that he was narrowing down to three teams and the Rams weren't one of them. And, um, you know, I I think what what happened from his side, from Odell's side, is he basically told the Rams, like, let's keep talking. Like, I know the money's not crazy, but let's keep talking. Um, Because at the beginning of this, he identified the Packers and Rams as his top two teams. He knew there'd be some interest from the Packers. I don't think he knew there'd be any interest from the Rams. So he kind of prodded them on a little bit. And then they started talking, and then Von Miller got involved, and then Jalen Ramsey got involved, and uh, it was a whole big recruiting thing. And in the end, it was down to the Packers and Rams. And um, I think he, you know, I think he ends up making a good choice that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I think so uh, too. Um, you know, and I got to have Trent Dilfer later on to talk about how the X's and O's might or might not work out. So it's amazing, you know, he and Vaughn are tight. So Vaughn, uh, the acquisition on Monday, he doesn't play on Sunday, but already pays dividends to get Odell be- there on the following Thursday, essentially. Yeah. That's what you're saying. And I don't, you know, we'll see on um, what happens with Vaughn. I'm not even sure he's playing this week, you know, because I think the Rams have a bye. Yep. Rams have a bye next week, right? Yes, they do. Yeah. So I think there's definitely, uh, we'll see what happens, but there was definitely some talk of, waiting till after the bye to make sure Vaughn's ankle is fully and 100% healed. So we'll see what ends up happening. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, he's a he's a big-time star power guy. Odell's a big-time star power guy. They're in a city where, you know, that really works. Um, I, I'm, I'm curious about the actual football part of it because, you know, the Rams, were, Rams have some pretty good receivers. Um, and I think they would be fine with Cup and Jefferson and Robert Woods and – did they need Odell? Probably not. Um, but it's not a bad, you know, third or fourth receiver to throw out there, right? But the Chiefs were in on him, huh? And 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 I guess yep. that that's you know the Rams certainly um, saying getting him and preventing him from going to Green Bay or New Orleans. Those are the teams that you'd mentioned. Seattle as well in their division. So you're preventing him from going somewhere in your division, and then other places in your conference, and then eventually potentially to a team that I know is is not looking super right now, but the last two AFC Super Bowl combatants in the Chiefs, that's that's a plus two, yeah. you know? So um Yeah, assuming that he's gonna be you know, assuming that he's gonna be a net positive, right? Like the money it's sort of like who cares, right? I mean, you know, the reason you save money against the cap is same thing as the Carolina Panthers. Like the reason you save money this time of year is to be able to spend it like this and it's not like you're gonna spend it on much else. Right. Right. So um, the money's sort of whatever. You just have to hope Odell is in that positive. I know in Cleveland he was not, um, and that's not like a shot at all. It's literally just a fact. Like they are a better team when he's not on the field. You hope it is the opposite with the Rams. Ian Rappaport here on the Rich Eisen Show. How did Cam wind up with Carolina? Ian, give me the yeah. storyline there. So a lot of hard conversations, um, and one specific. So you know they knew probably Tuesday that Sam Darnold's injury was pretty bad. Um, now, it's funny because, like, well, it's not funny, but it's interesting because Darnold looked really bad. And I think we all, the public, decided that he just sucked. <laughs> but reality was he was pretty badly injured. And I'm not sure how many people actually knew that. Not a lot of people. Um, and, he, you know, just couldn't make, couldn't make, like, regular throws. And you realize that it's hard to make regular throws with a cracked shoulder, um, mm. which is interesting. I learned that this week. Um <laughs> And so they found out how bad Darnold's injury was. And it was like, do we stick with PJ Walker, who we like, or should we just should we just do it? Like, let's just see if Cam is interested. So Matt Rule called Cam up on Tuesday night and was like, Are you interested? And he said, Yeah, I'm interested. So they got in the room. David Tepper, Stephen Drummond, well, their VP of football operations, Scott Fitter, Cam Newton, his dad, and talked it through, talked about the way everyone left, talked about the sort of divorce, realized that they were better together than apart, 
and they got together. And it was, I mean, it really is a little bit surreal. And he's on the practice field as we speak, and I still can't believe it. Yeah, I know. I saw him arriving number one in Carolina. He must be, yep. it must be weird for him, too. He thought he'd never do this again, and then football can be a, a, a crazy thing. Um, did the Saints never think about Cam, reach out to him a, at all? Because you'd have to wonder if Odell would have gone home to them if if it wasn't, you know, a second-slash-third-string quarterback that's going to be starting for them the rest yeah. of the year. I mean, I, I don't I, – I didn't know that the Saints – I don't know that the Saints reached out to Cam, but I do know that uh, – there were quarterback questions from Odell on the Saints. Like, I think he I mean, he really liked the Saints. He really liked Sean Payton. Just like he really liked Bill Belichick. He talked to Bill Belichick personally a couple times. Um, it was just the quarterback. It's just Trevor Simeon, you know? And I, not that my football X's and O's means very much. You know, that's not what I do. Um, I think Trevor Simeon will be good enough to lead the Saints where they want to go. He does exactly what Sean Payton wants to do, and that is valuable. He just follows his directions, which is definitely something. But if you're a, you know, potentially superstar receiver, that's not what you want. Um, so I think that was why the Saints kind of didn't end up with Odell. So Cam spoke to Bill, huh, personally? A couple of conversations? No, Odell. Odell, yeah. uh, right, sorry. Pardon. Odell spoke yeah. to Bill personally yeah. a couple times? Yeah. Huh. Okay. This is amazing. I mean, uh, unbelievable. A mid-season free agency tour for Odell Beckham Jr. is just the latest I mean, twist and turn, you know? You know, it was, it was weird, I have to say, too, because, you know, like these fr free agency is crazy. You know, March is absolutely bananas. Right. Um, and I just, like, personally, I was not totally ready for, like, the toll that this would take. Like, the last two weeks feel like they've been two months. <laughs> You know, like yeah, when Odell man. finally signed, and it was a craziness yesterday. And I was fun. I was like, all right, man, like, let's just have a normal week once, you know? I know. I, as I said that the Vaughn um, surprise acquisition by the Rams and then the Odell surprise signing by the, the Rams in, the, in between is the, the wildest NFL yada, yada, yada of all time. You know, it's kind of crazy, yeah. man. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.